appreciate him for his faithfulness appreciate him for his goodness appreciate him for who he is just lift up your voice and say lord i thank you i thank you i thank you i thank you for your goodness for your mercy for your faithfulness i thank you for loving me i thank you lord for the gift of life i thank you lord for preserving me i thank you lord for watching over me give god praise for your life thank the lord for your life no matter the circumstances no matter the situation god is worthy of our thanksgiving we must learn to appreciate god always our lord we appreciate you this morning we confess and testify that you are good and faithful to us and we bless your holy name we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we want to thank you for our friends we want to thank you for our families we want to thank you for our loved ones we want to thank you for our fathers in the faith we want to thank you for our nation for peace in our nation we want to thank you for your plans and purpose for our nation father we want to thank you for the body of christ we want to thank you because you have filled the church with your goodness we want to thank you because jesus is the head of his church we want to thank you because you continuously do good you continuously do good and father we are grateful that we can see one another that we can stand upon mount zion we are grateful lord that throughout the week lord that you've been with us you've been faithful with us and lord we say thank you if there's somebody here that is grateful to god i want you to lift up your voice and say lord i thank you lord i appreciate you lord i honor you thank you for loving us thank you for loving us thank you for your faithfulness shout hallelujah say my god is good always good even to me praise the lord he has led us from january to this day amen he alone has led us and he that has begun this good work he will let us see the end of this year in the name of jesus christ and he will bring us into the new year in the name of jesus christ lift up your hand if you believe that and say lord i thank you lord i thank you you are always doing good forever you are a good god my praise my thanksgiving will always come to you all the days of my life all the days of my life and shout hallelujah i want to welcome you to this wonderful service in the presence of the almighty god all-powerful god amen and i don't know about this week for you it's been wonderful it's been glorious and in all situation god is always good i want you to reach out to two three people and tell them god has been good to me reach out to two three people and i want to tell you that god has been good to me god has been good to me god has been good to me God has been good to me. God has been good to me. God has been good to you. God will continue to be good to you. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. He brought you this far. He will take you to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
with full ability, you will never be disabled. I say to you, you will never be disabled. In the name of Jesus Christ, the hand that brought you forth is strong enough to take you to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, the number of days of man shall be 120. And the Lord said, the number of days of man shall be what? 120 days. 120 months. 120 what? Now in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be, every word shall be established. I don't know about you. Reach out to two or three people. Tell them my number of years is 120. Not by me, but by the Lord. But by the Lord. The number of my days shall be 120. 120 shall be the number of our days. Hallelujah. As it is written, so shall it be. As it is written, so shall it be. The number of our days, the number of our days shall be what? Shall be what? If you believe that, shout a big hallelujah. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. And so when we talk about youth in the church in this ministry, we're not talking about 18 year old. Our youth starts from 25. And then our youth end at 60. Praise the Lord. Say I'm a youth. Say you are a youth. Praise the Lord. Now, there are many people that think that being old is to eat bigger meat. Listen, <laughs> don't take because of meat and get old. Amen? Because you will have whatever you say. Amen? Amen? I mean, you look at it. People retire in the world at the age of 60, 65. They retire you. They retire them. Would you like to retire at the age of 60? For what now? For what now? Praise the Lord. The Bible says that even in old age, what does God define as old age? 120. He said even at old age, you will still be what? Fruitful. Meaning that nobody gets incapacitated with God now. You will never need a witcher in your life. You will never need a witcher. Are you hearing me? The Bible said that Moses was 120. And his strength was not abetted. Nor his eyes dim. Amen. You will wear glass as a fashion. No, you didn't get that. <laughs> you didn't get that. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You will wear glasses as a fashion to match your clothing. Yes, but not for you to see. Not for you to see. Yes, not for you to see. Hallelujah. Not for you to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, you can wear hair attachment because it is a fashion. You want it longer. But not because you are supposed to have hair and you don't have hair. Amen. Amen. If you need hair, lay hand on your head and command the hair to grow. Yes. Simple, isn't it? Yes. Lay hand on your hair and command it to grow. And what will happen? It will grow, it will grow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is when you don't have faith in the word of God, that is when it will not happen. Amen. For instance, for instance, instead of paying your tithe, you are buying attachment. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you see where the problem is? You have your faith in attachment. And you will also detach it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May your life not be attached to attachments. <laughs> May your life not be attached to in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. May your life be attached to Jesus. 
He is our life. He is our righteousness. He is the foundation and the cornerstone that is unshakable. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. There is no other name. There is no other name. I told you last week. In emergency, everybody calls Jesus. Whether those that believe and those that don't believe. Are you hearing me? In time of trouble, there is no other name that is valid. Are you hearing me? Even when the Muslim is with you, we say Jesus, we say amen. They won't call any other name. And that means Jesus is the name that is tested and proven. He walks in no situation. He walks in all circumstances. Say, Jesus, Jesus. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. Mm. You know, there are things I remember about Jesus. The Bible said that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, this is going to be a sermon maybe before the end of the year. And then, when he raised him, many people heard. The Bible said in John chapter 12 that many on the account of Lazarus believe the gospel. Amen? Amen. Because of Lazarus being raised from the dead, many what? Believed. And you know, it was not everybody that was happy. It wasn't everybody. The Bible said that the Jews, the Pharisees, they wanted to come back and put Lazarus back to death. Because many believed in Jesus because of him. And so they decided to kill him again. They decided to kill him again. Say, God forbid. God forbid. You think everybody is happy because you are doing well? Think again. And you know what? The Bible said now, we have been made alive with Christ. Amen. Amen. And then, Jesus, knowing what they did with Lazarus, he raised him, they wanted to put him to death. He made us alive. And you know what? As he made us alive, he didn't leave us again for them to put us to death. The Bible said, he raised us up with Christ. Are you hearing me? Not only he raised us up, now he carried us also with him to sit with him in heavenly places. So let me see who will put you to death again. Shout hallelujah somebody. Shout hallelujah somebody. He made us alive and he raised us alive. And so that nobody will put you to death again. I told you, before the end of the year, by the grace of God, I will teach you that. The life that cannot be killed. Are you hearing me? The life that cannot be what? That is abundant life. And I said to you that prosperity is not about money in your bank. Prosperity is what? <laughs> you see what happens when you don't have a notebook? What did I say that prosperity is? Command and control. Ability to what? Command and control. Money will finish. Money will do what? Finish. But Power can generate money. Praise the Lord. Poor people go for money. Rich people go for power. Because with power, you can decree all the money come to you. Amen? Do you see what Buhari has done? He said, redesign the Naira, and people are in trouble. He said, just to well, change the color of the Naira. So those that buried money in their, in their houses, in their ceilings, <laughs> In their backyard, they are digging up graves of money. Amen? Amen? One decree has put them in trouble. And that is why Jesus said, I have come to give you power. Our original nature is to rule with power. We must be people of power. Amen? Amen. The world is too dangerous to live without power. They came to put Lazarus back to death. But now we have been made alive. We've been raised alive. We are seated alive in Christ Jesus. The life that cannot be killed. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to welcome you to this wonderful service from wherever you are connected in the micro church or online 
wherever you are a very special welcome to you on behalf of our lord jesus christ and i believe and i decree that the word of the lord today we minister grace unto you i pray that the word of the lord is going to bless you that the word of god will never judge you but will bring mercy into your life in the name of jesus christ as you receive the word of god today oh you will receive grace and you will have peace in your life in jesus precious name shout hallelujah. hallelujah please take your seat grab your bible your notebook remember that i said our end of the year fasting and praying will be first week of december right that's going to be from the 5th of december to the 11th of december shout hallelujah <clears throat> our one week of praying and fasting and in that one week of praying and fasting as the Lord leads us we are going to be dealing with a lot of things from the 5th to the 11th that is Sunday and by the grace of God the Friday will be an all night <laughs> praise the Lord it's going to be an all night it will be a game changer in your life Praise the Lord. By the time we finish that praying and fasting, you will be shocked at the things that will manifest in your life. The glory that will appear in your life, even your enemies will acknowledge that God is working for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So please mark that date and book that date, those dates, praying and fasting from the 5th of December to the 11th of December and prepare yourself for it. If I were you, the things you want to deal with, personal things you want to deal with, write them down. And if you have possibility of sending it to me, you can send it to me. Or if you can place it on the altar, it is still okay, I will get it. Praise the Lord. Whatever that you want to deal with in your life whatsoever that has been that has been a problem write it down like i said place it on the altar let me just say place it on the altar before we start amen, amen. and i will have it and i will put them together and i will present all of them before the lord it's going to be a time of change for each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> now, last Sunday, we were talking about the law, whether we are under the law or we are not under the law. And when I asked the question, are we under the law or not? A lot of you, you know, because of the teaching, said, yes, we are under the law. Uh, but we found that letter... No, many of you say we are not under the law. We found out later that truly, from the word of God, we should be under the law. Praise the Lord. We should be what? Because there are two laws. There are two laws from what we read from Romans chapter 8. There is the law of sin and death, and there is a law of sin, of, of, of life. Praise the Lord. There is a law of sin, and there is a law of what? that and there is a lot of the spirit of life in christ jesus and so whether you like it or not you have to be under one law you can't be in a neutral there is no void in the realm of the spirit praise the lord and unfortunately this teaching we have gone on about not being under law listen if you are without any law in your life you are lawless that's the truth if you are not if you are not under any law you are what lawless and when i went to check what the meaning of lawless means i was shocked and i want to read out to you what it means to be without law so that when you get to say that you are not under the law you need to be careful what you are saying now lawlessness means you are not regulated by or your life is not based on any law i don't think anybody wants to live like that Lawlessness means you are not controlled by 
or you are life based on any law whatsoever. He continues, he said, you are not restrained or controlled by law. You are unruly. You are illegal. Amen. You are illegal. And so lawlessness is, is, is a serious matter. You must bring yourself under the law of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus. You need to. You need to. We are supposed to be. Amen. You know, when we talk about law, most often people think that the Ten Commandments which God gave in Exodus 20 is the thing, right? But when you talk about law, people think about Ten Commandments, isn't it? Now, even if you look at that, if you say that we are not under the law, then does it mean that the Ten Commandments is illegal? Think about it. When we say that we are not under the law, Amen? It means that the Ten Commandments, they are wrong, so we can, we can just ignore it and live contrary to it. Does that make sense? Think about it. And so, a lot of the teachings, you see, we are actually saved from lawlessness. We are saved from lawlessness. And then we come into the kingdom of God. And God's word God's word is a law in the universe. I want to show you the discussion that God had with Isaac in Genesis. Please, let's go to Genesis chapter 26. I want us to understand what the law means with God. Amen? Amen. Say, God is good. Genesis 26, I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis 26, I'm reading from verse 1. Now, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Jerah, verse 2. Genesis 26, verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. No, verse 3. He said, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendant, I give all this land, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Praise the Lord. Verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all this land. And in in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Is that your Bible? In your seed. Amen. In your seed. All the what? Does that include you? And all the nations shall be what? Blessed. He says, because... Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, kept my commandments, kept my status, and my what? Is that in your Bible? And my laws. Is that in your Bible? But there was no law then. There was no law then. You can go back and check. There was no law. The laws only came into effect in the book of Exodus. But God said that Abraham obeyed his laws. And that is the terrible thing about some teaching that we don't balance very well. And when I say we, I mean ministers of the gospel, including me. We don't balance very well. Remember, from the beginning, God said to Adam, everything you can have, but one you should not have. Amen? Amen? He said, eat everything, take everything, but there is only one law that you must not violate. What was the law? He said, of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, don't touch it. Don't eat it. He said, for the day you touch it, the day you eat it, sorry, 
you will surely what? Die. Is that a law or not? Is that a law or not? But it's only the word of God. You see, every new creation, every believer, we are under the law of God's word. We are, and, 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 and the danger of some of the teaching we have done is the possibility to give people the liberty, the, the, the liberty to be lawless. Unlimited freedom is lawlessness. Unlimited. And, and for a nation like Africa, or a continent like Africa, until we get to have laws that people obey, Africa will not develop. Are you hearing me? Until the law takes effect in the nation or in the continent, Africa will not. Until, you see, the law makes you accountable. When we say that we are not under the law, it's like telling an alcoholic to watch over the brewery. Are you hearing me? The guy is already an alcoholic. You say, okay, I want you to watch over Guinness. I want to make you a manager of Guinness. He's lawless. Sorry, he's alcoholic. And now you say to him, all the brewing business, you are the minister of brewery. The guy will just thank you. Amen. In the same way, we have been saved from lawlessness. We cannot become what we were saved from now. It, it, it doesn't, does it make sense that we are saved from the law of sin and death and then we are made to be lawless in the kingdom of God? It's not possible. The word of God is law in his kingdom. The word of God is what? Law in his kingdom. And I said to you that if you look at a character called the devil, even though the devil was cast down, the devil does not cross the line of God's word. Are you hearing me? When God said to him, do whatever you want, but don't touch the life of Job, the devil stayed within the law that God gave him. He never crossed the line. Amen? God says, no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. That's what God said. Praise the Lord. He says, no weapon fashioned against us shall do what? Prosper. And then he says, any tongue that will rise against us in judgment, we shall do what? Who should condemn it? We. We should condemn it, isn't it? He says, he says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. He says, this is the right of the servants of the Lord, right? Let's look at that scripture. Isaiah 54. Then, I want to show you something. He says, no weapon fashioned against us shall what? Prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against us, we shall condemn in judgment, right? He says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. He says, their righteousness is mine. Praise the Lord. All right. That is, that is. The scripture there. But I want us to go to Mark. You've read that one, right? Right? Uh, where are you? You are still there. You've not moved. But you've, you've read the scripture, right? Verse 17, right? Good. Now, let us... Let us go to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let us go there. Remember what Isaiah 54 has said to us. Let us go to Mark 11, 23. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Let us read verse 23, everybody together. Huh? Eh? Mark eleven twenty thirty. 20, 30. Everybody on your feet. On your feet. It's like the place is too cool for you. And so the sleep you missed last night, you are trying to catch up in church. 
Did you hear everybody on your feet? That guy has slept so much that people are even begging him. <laughs> Jesus. Is that the guy that wants to join the worship team? Uh, that's the guy. Praise the Lord. Levi, go and read from his own Bible. He wants to join the worship team. Go and read from his own Bible. You are the leader of the worship team. Praise the Lord. Sorry? What? No Bible. Okay. Okay. And uh, he wants to join the worship team. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Say, God is good. God said, back in Isaiah 54, no weapon that is fashioned against us shall prosper. That is in the Old Testament, right? And every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, we do what? We should do what? Condemn it. He says, this is, this is, he says, this is the right and the privilege. That's what the word, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. He said, those that serve me, this is their right in Christ. Praise the Lord. He says, I will qualify them to enjoy this because I am their righteousness. He said, I will qualify you. Amen. And Jesus has become our righteousness. Praise the Lord. But in Mark eleven twenty three, we see where the fulfillment, that, you see with the connection with that scripture, we see how it comes here now. Come on. Let's read. Verse 23. For as surely I said to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have what? Whatever he says. That scripture connects to this. And that is why when people say that they are not under the law, they don't Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the laws and the prophets, not to abolish it. And Jesus referenced the laws many times. So, don't get yourself into a teaching that will slow your faith down. What God has said, we're supposed to come into agreement with what God has said. That is faith in action. Are you hearing me? He says, any tongue that will rise against us in judgment, he didn't say we should complain about them. He didn't say we should fight against them. What did he say we should do? He said we should condemn the tongues that rise up against us. He says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the world pulling down of stronghold. Listen to me. We need to understand the world, the way the Lord of the Spirit and life works. There are laws that were established. Listen. Back in Genesis, God said, sit time and harvest shall what and that is settles and then in the new testament he says whatever you sow that's what you reap it is a continuation but that law was established what in genesis so the law of prosperity the law of prosperity does not answer to prayer you may not like it but that's the truth the law of prosperity does not what Answer to prayer. He says, seed time and harvest shall not what? Cease. That's what God says. It's a law. As long as you sow, you will always reap. That's a law. Amen. There is a law for grace. Grace does not answer to prayer. Are you hearing me? <laughs> you know, the, the, Bring yourself and say, I am under the law. Say, I have to be under the law. Grace does not answer to pain and fasting. The Bible said that God resists the proud and do what? Gives grace to who? Give grace to who? Do I have any humble person here? 
These are laws that are established in the word of God. You cannot change it. Sickness and disease does not answer to prayer. This will shock you now. This will shock you. Praise the Lord. If you go back from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostles, how many people did Jesus pray for them to get healed? How many people? I know what James said in James chapter 5. If there's anybody sick in your midst, let him call for the elders of the church that they pray for him and they pray of faith. I know that one. Praise the Lord. I know that one. But that's James, right? How many people did Jesus pray for, for them to get healed? No, how many? Can you show me one? The woman with the issue of blood, did Jesus pray? The Canaanite woman, did Jesus pray? The ten lepers, did Jesus pray? Okay, let's get to the Acts of the Apostles. The man that was sitting at the gate, how long did Peter pray for his eyes to be open? John chapter 9, the blind man, how long did they pray? Listen, we are wasting prayers. And we'll continue to waste prayer until we are corrected. How many people did Jesus, the paralytic man in Mark chapter 2, that was lowered from the roof, I'm talking about critical situation. The man at the pool of Bethesda, how many did Jesus pray for? Hello, I'm about to turn around your theology. Pastor, pray. Pastor, pray. Some of us have prayed it will become prayer mantis. Everything let us pray. Everything let us pray. You are coming late to church, you say pray. Pray. What are we praying for? The demon of late coming. But that demon only works when you are coming to church. When you are going to work, you are there on time. You think, who are you fooling? You want me to pray that prayer? Come now. No, are you getting it? Are you getting it? There are laws. And God established the law for divine health. Back in Exodus, from the beginning of the church. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And you shall serve, do what? Please sit down. Let this woman that is, let her stand up and go to the back. Let her go to the back. I said she should stand up. Praise the Lord. We need to understand certain things does not answer necessarily to prayer. Amen. Amen. What does it answer to? The law of God. Amen. The law of what? God. If you are not under any law, the word of God will not work for you. Simple. God said, I will bless Isaac because of the obedience of Abraham. And because Abraham obeyed my laws. That's what God said. Was there any Ten Commandments? No. We, we, we need to get ourselves alive. Praise the Lord. He says, you will have whatever you say. In the new creation, our word carries power. During the CDI, I said to you, control what you say about your body. Control your tongue. About You see, the greatest enemy to your body is your tongue. You, did you hear what I just said? Because the devil understood the law very well. And so what he does is that he watches for your mistakes. When you say you are tired, you are so tired, you are so tired, the devil will put it, psh, psh, tiredness. And then you say, your head is banging. He will say, the demon, carry hammer, bang the head at thy word. You will get whatever you say. Praise the Lord. 
until we come to the knowledge of the do you know why Christ was careful in his word he says I, I, I speak as my father in heaven speak are you hearing me Many of us, we are too careless and we don't understand that our tongue, our tongue in new creation is a credit card for our purchases. Are you hearing me? You buy things with your words in the new creation. You need to get it. When the Bible said that for we know that all things work together for good. Romans 8, 28, we dealt with that last week. And I will encourage you to listen to last Sunday message. It started by Romans chapter 8, verse 2. It says, the law of the spirit and, and life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There are two laws. Two laws. And the Bible tells us why we must be under the law. I want us to go to Galatians, I believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It is dangerous to have a dealing with any lawless person because they can affect your life. Galatians chapter 5. Are we there? Verse 13. And I'm reading from the ESV version, English Standard Version Bible translation. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. It says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. That is good, isn't it? For you were what? Called to freedom, brothers. Only. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Isn't it? Verse 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. The whole law. Does that tell us that we have laws? Jesus said the new commandment I give unto you, right? And then Paul is saying that the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. That's the word. So, so when you bite and devour one another, he said, watch out that you are not consumed. So when you go after one another, when you gossip after one another, when you speak evil after one another, not only are you breaking the law, but you are in danger of being consumed. Are you hearing me? Let's go to verse 16. The same scripture. He said, but I say, I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the spirit, and you will not what, gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. Verse 17. For the desires of the flesh are what? Against spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Oh? Read what follows. Please read it. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. Ah. No, no, no. What did he say? To keep you from doing the things you want to do. In some translation, it says to keep you from doing what you wish to do. So, there is a reason why we have to be under the law in the New Testament. And so that we don't pursue selfish desire. We don't pursue fleshly desire. And so, you are restrained by the love of God. Like Paul said, I am constrained by the love of God. Are you hearing me? You can be a Christian and do what you want. No! Is there in the Bible? The law is to stop us. Listen, if there are if there are no laws in this nation, what some of you will do will be an amazement. Because even with the law now, what you do is amazing. Do you get what I said? Even with all the laws, what you do is an amazement. Imagine if there's no law, what you will do. 
No, what you will do. Okay, we say here, every member should join a department. You have not joined any. You've been coming to church for over six months, one year. You've not joined. You just think that the law is not, that's not even good enough. Why will you join? Why will you join? No matter how long it is, say how much. Why? Would, and we say, we want to get to know you better. When you are in a department, you have a head. In time of trouble, your head will be able to know. You will be able to relate with the head, and then we know very quickly. And you are not in a department. And you complain that the church does not call. The church does not care. But you have not followed the rules. Are you hearing me? You have not followed the rules. The rule is that you should be in a department. When you are in this church and you are baptized and you are you born again, you should be in a department. That's the rule. And the reason why we did that is so that we get to know you. But because many of you live a funny life, you don't want anybody to know you. Give us number, you give us a wrong number. Give your address, you give a wrong address. And so that nobody will look for you, nobody will call you. Are you hearing me? And so you think that you are smart. You say, see them in that church. I gave them the wrong number. They, they, you gave Jesus the wrong number. But the devil will have the right number. You know how many numbers we call and say wrong number? From people that came to church. You think you are smart. Give us wrong number. The devil will have the right number. And when the devil gives you a parking ticket, he will get you. Are you hearing me? Give us your address. You said, um, actually, my place is far. We didn't ask you how far. Give us your address. Are you hearing me? You said, you don't need to bother because my place is complicated to get. Do you not get there? If you got there, shouldn't we get there? Give us your address. You refuse. You say, what's your address? You wrote again. So how should we locate you? We should go to Penn Cinema and say, Agege, calling your name. You purposely, you are hiding something. Why are you hiding it? No, why are you? Because if the church should show up in your compound, the testimony will be terrible. They say, who are you looking for? We're looking for Angelina. Where are you people from? From church. Why? She's our member. Hey! Angelina came to you post church. I will never enter that church if Angelina is not a church. And that's why you don't want to give us a number. Amen. You are married in church. Married people, stand up, you will sit. Single, stand up, you will sit. So we don't know which one you are. You live a dubious life in church. Dubious. You are like this. Amen. Amen. And you are supposed to be straight. Why are you hiding your address? No, why are you hiding your address? I'm talking to everybody that is listening to this message. Why are you hiding from God? Do you know when Adam started hiding, why Adam was hiding? No, you know why Adam was hiding? He said, I heard your voice, and I have to hide. God said, have you done what you are not supposed to do? He said, it's the woman you gave to me. You know, you, know, you see people, they say, I don't want people to come into my house. I want to keep my privacy. I don't want people to come and mess up my... You're already a mess. You're already what? Mess. By our coming... We can help you. At home, you smoke. You drink alcohol. Your room is uh, Johnny Walker. Henderson. You pack them. You put them. And so if we are to come there, we'll see, your, we'll see your club. Are you hearing me? And so you don't want us to come. We don't, you don't want us to come. By all means, you don't want us to come to your compound. But there is one that, is, that we come without address. His name is called Devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Association with believers is a good sign that you are among those that God has saved. Your association, 
You see the, the World Cup is going on now, right? Where? In Qatar, right? You see a full man with family painted his body without cloth, the color of Senegal. From head to feet, he painted himself the color of uh, Senegal flag. Foolishness. Because of football. He believed so much in it that he can decide to be a fool. He believed so much in ball, air with leather, he can be a fool. If only we can do that with the Holy Spirit. That we can believe so much in the spirit and the life that comes with him. And then we will close our ears to what people say. One of my pastors said something one time when he was teaching us. He said, if you were arrested as a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Are you hearing me? If you arrest, if they arrest you, let's say we finish church now, and then uh, you are going home, and then police arrest you, you say you are coming from church, they say produce evidence. Would there be enough evidence to convince them that you are a Christian? Is there enough evidence to convict you in the court of human law that you are a Christian? What, what would be the incriminating evidence around you? Everybody should ask themselves that question. If you are arrested and accused to be a Christian, what is the evidence? If you say you go to a church, they will tell you, forget that when everybody goes to church. Going to church does not make you a Christian. If you are arrested as a Christian, please, I'm asking you, will there be enough evidence around you to convict you that you are truly a Christian? And Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. Are you hearing me? What will be the evidence? You are a fan of Manchester. Man, what do you call it? Man, you. Manchester what? Manchester United. That's what you call it. You have their jersey. You even have their boot written Manchester. You, you have their football almanac. Is that what they call it? In your house. You have evidence that you belong to Manchester you or Chelsea or whatever. And you never stop talking about Chelsea and Manchester United. You know all the 11 players. You know them. Do you even know the name of the apostles? No, do you know? Do you know? Football time. You say you don't have money, but you will buy a drink for everybody when they score. Where did that money come from? Barman! Serve everybody drink, I will pay. You. You are buying people a drink on account of a goal scored. You are not the one that scored it. You will never see the reward of that goal. And you are spending money to buy people a drink. Are you hearing me? And so there's an, enough evidence to convict you as a fan of Chelsea. Is there an evidence to convict you that you are a Christian? Let's be honest by ourselves. We should thank God for his generosity. Because if God is to follow his law as he did in the Old Testament, many of us would be stoned to death last week. No, are you hearing me? Huh? Are you hearing me? Last week, there will be many barriers. But say thank God for grace. But God wants us to prosper. God wants us to be well. So he has designed rules and laws to make us well. To make us prosper. Amen. And I say to you, there are things that does not answer to prayer. Ah. Divine health is one of them. Prosperity is one of them. 
Christians does not answer to prayer. It doesn't. But when you begin to deal with the gift of the Spirit, oh yes, it answers to prayer. It answers to prayer. Are you hearing me? When you want to walk in the gift, in the anointing, because the Bible said that the Spirit distributes to every man as he wills. So, Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and test after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, you have a hunger, you have a test, you spend some time in prayer, in fasting, Holy Spirit, I need this gift. You are talking that you can't understand the Bible and that when you read it, you will escape from it. Have you spent time to fast about it? No, have you spent time to fast about it? By the way, before you talk about not understanding the Bible, how many Bibles have you bought to try and understand? And now, you are struggling with English. You went and bought King James. No, does that make sense? You are struggling with standard English. And then you went to buy King James Bible because you saw everybody carrying King James. And you thought that King James means royalty. That when you buy it, you are a royal. I mean, where there are Bibles in basic English. Bibles in simple English. Go and buy that one. I think there's even Bible in Pidgin English now. Right? Because they have it in Yoruba. They have it in Igbo. They have your Bible in Aosa. I think there's Bible in Pidgin English. I, I will check on that. I will let you know next Sunday. So whatever you speak, go and buy the Bible. Even if you cannot buy, there is one you can listen to. It's called Audio Bible. Are you hearing me? Yes, audio what? Bible. Go. You don't even need to buy it. Buy data. But if data is expensive, go and buy it. It's just in a very small thing like this. You put battery and you start listening. From Matthew, it continues. And so you buy it. You just, you just be listening. And then, if you don't have much education, you pray, Lord, as I listen, let it stay in me. Give me understanding of what I'm listening to. There is such so much resources, you have no excuse, no excuse for not knowing the Bible. And until you know the Bible, you will not be able to defend what belongs to you, simple. You say you are busy, that's why you can't read. But when you go to work, you are in traffic for two hours. Plug your ear with the Bible. When you are coming back to work, two hours you are in traffic, plug your ear with the Bible. Because what? It is your life. It's your life. A life without the word of God you can only be with the word. Say the word. The word is your life. Amen. You may not like the message today, but I'm trying to help you to develop a, or to build a better life. If they come to your house, if they search everywhere, they may not see Bible. If in what they will see as a Bible, they will not touch it because it's too dirty. Are you hearing me? And that one is actually a gift from a church when you visit as a first timer. And that's the Bible you are still using up to date. You are 10 years born again. And your Bible is still a free gift from the church. And so when you want to change your Bible, you visit under new church. Those that don't have Bible, raise your hand. You say, at least I've gotten a new Bible. That's the way you buy a new Bible. You go to another church, they give you, they give you. Are you hearing me? How many of you have your mobile phone here? I didn't say you have it. Let me see your mobile phone. Just raise it up. No, raise it. No, no, no. It's not a problem. I, I, I didn't say. Just raise your mobile phone on. Raise it up. Praise the Lord. Raise it up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let me see it. Wow. So nice. So nice. Put it down. 
Everybody raise your Bible. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Raise your Bible. <laughs> Even some of you are laughing. What are you raising you? Is that your Bible? Raise your Bible. You see, carry your mobile phone. Do it like this to your Bible. Hello? Are you here? No. Bring your mobile phone. Do it like this. Phone. Bible. Ask yourself, how much does it cost? Do you, do, where's your phone? Uh -huh. Paul. Stand up. Stand up. No, keep your notebook. Bring your Bible. I'm calling him. Come now. You don't want to come. This is your phone. Very heavy. <laughs> is what? How much is this phone? How much? Eh? Thank you. 55K. 55K. How much is this? <laughs> How much? How much is a gift? How much? You can't even remember. So it's Bible. Have you ever prayed that you want to understand the Bible? You pray that prayer. How can you understand with this? This Bible needs revival. Are you hearing me? 50, what? 55K handset. 2,000 Naira. Word of life. <laughs> when did you buy it? Long. Come on, this Bible was not your own, oh. <laughs> this Bible is a gift. It says by Papa Eureka. <laughs> this is not your Bible, Paul. It was what? What's his name here? What? Chica Glory. Chica Glory. Who is Chica Glory? My younger sister. Which sister? My younger sister. You are younger sister? You are younger sister. My step sister. So who is Papa? Papa? That is her dad. Eh? Her dad. Her dad. So your dad gave it to your sister? No, she's the one. I kept it. She's the one that was playing with the Bible. So she wrote. What's the name here? Original name that's cancelled. Did you buy this Bible? How much? It has been long. Praise the Lord. That is just an example. No, sit down, sit down, sit down. We'll deal with that after. And uh, the way you are laughing, if I go around and catch your own, your own will. Chidima. No, not your own. Cheat him. Show me your Bible. Bring your Bible. Some of these things, we need to go into it because in school they do the same. They do the same. You know, we are too religious here. Cheat him. Cheat him. No, no, no. Don't come for that. Stay, stay, stay. How much did you buy this Bible? It's not your own. Is this your Bible? Hey! Oh God. 
Let me not ask again. Should I ask more? I, I know you said I should not ask again. Because you know what will happen if I get to you. That Bible is up to 2,000. You don't know how much. It's like even Genesis is going out gradually. Hey. Now, you know why the Bible says God is not mocked. You know why the Bible says God is what? It's not mocked. The Bible says where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. Hmm? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. There is a Bible you will have. It will, it will make you want to study. I saw one of my Bible. Uh, you know, he came from with a shipment. As I just carried the joy swelled up in my heart. As I just, I opened it and began to read. Immediately. I was so excited to have it in my hand. When you carry the word of God and it doesn't give you joy, something is wrong. No, something is wrong. Are you hearing me? There is this song that this lady, Osinachi, sang. They cry. I've not heard it before. I only had it, I think, two, three days ago. They cry. I will encourage you to come and listen to that. Listen. <clears throat> I have listened to that. I only found out about, about it two, three days ago anyway because I was checking some things and I saw it. I just keyed into it. And wow. And I've not stopped listening to it every day since that time. One of the biggest problems we have is that we have no enticement about heaven. Hold on. Elizabeth and Lizzie, two of you should go there. Two of you should go to the left-hand side. And I will deal with two of you after service. The word of God is going on like this. They are busy talking at the back. And they are the ones that are supposed to be watching others. One of the reasons the word of God does not sink into you is that you don't have focus and attention. You are in church and the word of God is coming. And the what we are sharing, it pertains to everybody, including me. And you allow yourself to be distracted. And so after service, you can only gaze what pastor said. Praise the Lord. You can only guess what pastor said. When the word of God is in you, you will develop the fear of God. Your attitude towards God will be reflected in what you do, even in church. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not going to school. Not going to school. Praise the Lord. My daughter asked me a question two days ago. She said to me, Daddy, what would you like, what would you really like to have on your birthday? She asked me two days ago. She's here. She asked me, Daddy, what would you really like to have for your birthday? And I said something to her. I said, Bill Gates said, Bill Gates, you know Bill Gates, the owner of Microsoft. He said, one gift he would like to give Africa as a continent is to buy good government for them buy good government, if it's possible. He would like to buy good government for them. And I said to her, I said, 
if there be one gift I would like to have, is to take the word of God and put it in the heart of the people. I said, this is, I said, because when I see the way people live and do things of God, I feel sad for them. That's right. Was that what I said to you two days ago? I said, if there be one gift I would like to have for my birthday, it is to take the word of God, put it in the heart of young people, put it in the heart of everybody, and so that they will get to love God. Sometimes I'm amazed at the behavior of people with the things of God. How can you go to work early and come to church late? It doesn't make sense. It means that your work is more valuable than the church. That's what it means. That's what it means. You are faithful at work. You follow all the rules. In church, you are not faithful. You go to work every day. Despite the traffic, you go. Sunday, there is no traffic. That's the day you want to rest. Who are you mocking? We just looked at the Bibles in the church. Bibles. There are people that the only Bible they have is on their mobile, adver- mobile uh, format. That's their Bible. But that's not God's way. Because that one can be corrupted easily. And many versions Online has been corrupted. You need to have the real Bible in your hand. And that's why many believe what is not scriptural because they don't study the Bible. They believe what they said. Sit down with the word of God. You'll be amazed what you will discover. Sit down with the word of God. Children go to school. They have homework. They have test books. True or false. And that's pertaining to the things of the world. How is it that Christians come to church without test books, without homework? If I ask you to read particular chapters of the scripture, many of you will not remember. And then you will beat up your children to do their homework. And if somebody beats you for not doing your scripture, you will leave the church. You are busy. Praise the Lord. You are busy. Busy for what? You are never occupied by the work of the Lord. The world occupies you so much and that makes you sick. And then when the world makes you sick, you run to God for healing. And God looks at you and says, God will ask you, who did you spend this energy on? Who did you spend your strength on? Who did you spend your time on? God will ask you, of all your strength in a week, how much do I get out of it? The world will make you sick. The world will make you tired. You know, when you read the word of God, you can sense the anointing there flowing through you, revitalizing you. I can't remember when it was last week. I was just meditating upon something, reading some things as I saw it. And then I was listening to this worship. And suddenly the anointing just came upon me right there. And I began to feel the presence and the anointing. of God. I was so blessed. Ah! Just in the calmness. And somebody will say to you, meditate upon the word of God. You know what it means to meditate upon the word? You are by yourself to yourself, unto yourself with the spirit of God. And all you are doing, you are just worshipping. You are just praising God. You are just magnifying God. You take songs that exalt the name of the Lord. I pray that before the year ends, I will be able to teach on meditation and maybe during the time of praying and fasting. Because if you don't learn the secret of meditation, you will not succeed. Dwell upon the word. Meditate upon it. You listen. You listen to worship for one or two hours. You are alone by yourself. And this one, I'm not talking about the one it is playing. You are dancing busy. You're not remembering, touching this, touching that. I'm just talking about, you are seated there, or you are lying down there, and then, you know, the worship is going on, and your spirit is filled with it. Tell me how the demon will enter into a room. No, tell me which demon will enter into a room filled with worship. I am not talking about when you are sleeping. 
I am talking about when you are actively during the day, you, you just calm down. Or when you woke up, or in the evening, or a particular time, you just key into worship. Those are the things that transform life. Suddenly, the anointing will come upon you. Suddenly, because anywhere worship is, there is a presence of God there. You are too, you are too much on the move. Too much on the move. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you read the word, you will find out that we are under the law. And that law is called the law of the spirit and life. And that law is called the law of love. We are under the law of love. We are commanded to love. It's a law. You don't love because you like it. You, are, you love because you are commanded to do so. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you. Love one another as I have loved you. He said, by this they will know that you are my disciples. It is a law. We are under it. You tell somebody, of all you have done, it's difficult for me to hate you because I'm under the law. My flesh wants to hate you. My flesh wants to have nothing to do with you. But because of the law of God, I have to walk in love towards you. And that does not mean that you have to be a fool to that person. That means you have to be wise. Praise the Lord. It's called the law of love. And Paul defined it as the excellent way. A more excellent way. It's a law. I pray that your life will be changed by the word of God. In Jesus mighty name. I pray that the word of God, you will take it serious in your life. This is our life. No, this is our life. If you love God, you will love his word. Are you hearing me? If you love God, you will do what? I tell, even mommy, I tell mommy, I said, the greatest love you have for me is when I command you to do something, you do it. That's the greatest love. You don't love me by buying me food and uh, giving me things and all that. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. The greatest love you can ever show to somebody is obedience to them. Especially when you are dealing with a relationship that is higher than you, that greater than you. When the person says, don't, don't do this, you stop doing it. That's, that's the mark of love. But you will understand love differently because you don't even get to read the word of God. The greatest love, Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And John said, this is the commandment. This is love that we keep his commandments. That's love. When you are told not to do this, you don't do it because you love the person. Not because you are afraid of the person. You want to preserve that relationship. And that's what God is asking us to do. He says, spend time in my word. Dwell in my word. I mean, that is it. Praise the Lord. Rise on your feet. Please, I'm begging you, as we come towards the end of the year, make up your mind. I say, make up your mind. To love God in spirit and in truth. Make up your mind to walk in love. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Anybody that didn't want to go to school, no matter the school you put the person, the person will still not go to school. Are you hearing me? Because going to school is not being in the school. Going to school is a mind you made up by yourself. Make up your mind to love God. I beg you. 
that it may be well with you. All this shortcut, shortcut, shortcut is destructive. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Say, Father, Father. In, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want to love you, Lord, love you, Lord. Like, never before. like never before. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Teach, me teach me how to love, how to love. The, Lord with all my heart. the Lord with all my heart. For I want to live. I want it to be well with me. Teach me, Lord, to love with all my heart, with all my soul, or with all my strength. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. It is well. Let that be the best decision you will make as we come to the end of the year that you've chosen to love the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Amen. Let's bring out our tithe and our offering. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <coughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say God is, God is good. Bring out your tithe, your offering. And then those online, you can see our details online. Amen. Amen. Lift it up. Father, we thank you. It's always a privilege and great opportunity to support the kingdom with our finances, with our income. And Lord, we lift up our hand again with joy and with love in our heart. Giving into your kingdom, giving into your work, that your name will be glorified and that the gospel will continue to be preached, and that impact will be made by the church all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, Father, as we honor you with our tithe, with our offering, with our seed, we rebuke every devourer. And we say the name of the Lord will defend us. The name of the Lord will protect us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. For as we honor you, Lord, we will never see this honor. As we lift up our hand, our hand will never be feeble. And to God be the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, next Sunday is Super Sunday. <laughs> and it is the last Super Sunday for the year. Amen? And so we must make it glorious. By doing what? By going all out. Take your seat. By going all out for evangelism, for inviting people and all that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to make it super, super Sunday. Praise the Lord. And um, yesterday... The community came to the church and commissioned the lighting project we did on Nesinko Street. Praise the Lord. It was really wonderful. It was really wonderful. They prayed for this church. They blessed us. And the name of the Lord was greatly glorified. It was just wonderful. It was just wonderful. Praise the Lord. And then um, it tells us that Good works does not save us, but we are created to do good works. Amen? So doing good work is our nature after the new creation. It doesn't save us. It doesn't bring us salvation. But if you have received salvation, you must produce good works. And I thank God that we were able to bless the community. And what is remaining by the grace of God we will be able to do it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We continue to work, and God will help us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you are here and you are not born again, what we are talking about will not make sense to you. It is only when you are born of the Spirit that you understand the Lord of the Spirit and life in Christ Jesus. 
And so if you are here or in the micro church or online and you are not born again, please, I want you to raise your hand. If you are not born again and you want to give your life to Jesus, please raise your hand, whether in the micro church or wherever you are, and the word of God will locate you. Those of you in the micro church, please reach out to whoever that is there that is not born again. And if there be anyone that is online, just lift up your hand and say this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And Lord, I ask for mercy and I ask for the forgiveness of my sins. And Lord, I have received your word today, the word of life. And I know I need a savior. I need a redeemer. And therefore, I call upon your name, O God of heaven and the earth, to save me and deliver me from my sins. I need Jesus in my life. Father, I give my life this day to Jesus. And I make Jesus the Lord of my life. And I pray that from today, I will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I will begin to live for Jesus every day of my life. Every covenant with the devil, I break it today in the name of Jesus. I come under the covenant of the blood of Jesus. And I declare that I am saved. I am born again. Because I have called upon the name of Jesus. I receive salvation in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, I declare I am born again. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so shall it be. If you got born again online, you can contact us through the social media. Our contacts are there. And then also, if you are in the micro church, our leaders are there to help you and to attend to you. Praise the Lord. And if you are here also, and today is your first time of worshiping with us, or being in God's family church, whether in the micro church or here, we would like to also to welcome you. If today is your first time, raise your hand wherever you are, please. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Please just stand on your feet. Take your Bible. Take your bag. We have a place at my right hand reserved for you. Please just take your seat. Usher, help them. And whether you are online and also you are in the micro church, if today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, we give a very special welcome to you on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are delighted that you are here. We are delighted that you made it. We want you to know that Jesus loves you. And that the word of the Lord you have heard today will be a blessing to your life. And that from today, if you don't have a local church where you are actively participating, prayerfully consider God's family church as your family. I will be more than delighted to have you. And I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He that brought you will keep you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I am blessed. Our midweek is 5 o'clock Wednesday evening. And then also you can listen to this message again on YouTube. Just type Gospelogy Eden. Praise the Lord. If you don't have the full meaning of Gospelogy, it's written there. You can, you can actually get it from just around if you want to get Gospelogy. And then as we share the grace now for 25 minutes or so, there will be a video on character development. And that will only be about 25 minutes. Praise the Lord. So please just be patient and listen to that. It will bless you also in the micro church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I bless your week. I bless your expectation. I bless the desires of your heart. The word of the Lord you have heard today will produce goodness in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with peace. I bless you with peace. I bless you with peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, this week will be a week of comfort for you. It will be the week of comfort for you. The Spirit of the Lord will comfort you. We minister unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. And you are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, shout hallelujah. Now, like I said, the video you're about to watch is just about 25, 30 minutes maximum. Be patient. Watch it. It will bless you greatly.
Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace together universally. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. God's goodness and mercies are flowing us all the days of our lives. God bless you in Jesus' name. the training, you will never lead in the things of God. No student goes against his teacher and passes the exam. This seminar focuses on training you in a way that God can use you. So let's talk about respecting your seniors. If we look at the story of um, um, Esau and Jacob, who was a senior? Esau. By how many years did he senior Jacob? This will shock some of you. By how many years did he senior Jacob? All this, uh, the older one, the older one, the older one. How many? If uh, Jacob wants to ask Jacob, we say, by the way, how many years did you used to senior me? 